Understanding the Biology of Mental Illness What exactly is a mental illness? The term clearly indicates that there is a problem with the brain. But is it just the brain in an abstract sense, or is there a physical basis to mental illness? As scientists continue to investigate mental illnesses and their causes, they learn more about how the biological processes that make the brain work are changed when a person has mental illness. In order to understand what a mental illness is, one must first understand the brain and how it works. As you may know, the brain is our most complex organ. It is often referred to as a person's master control center because it controls all the functions of our bodies. The cells that are important in brain function are called neurons. A neuron is a specialized cell that can produce different actions because of its precise connections with other neurons, sensory receptors, and muscle cells. The brain is comprised of specialized networks of neurons that control things like movement and vision, but also very complex and highly integrated networks of neurons which control every single aspect of the brain's function. Neurons communicate using both electrical signals and chemical messages. So the question is, what does the brain do? The brain has many different functions, but they can be categorized into six components. The first is thinking or cognition. The second is perception or sensing, or in other words, how the brain sees the world. The third function of the brain is emotions. Emotions are the ability to experience feelings and express those feelings to others. Signaling is the fourth function of the brain, and this is how the brain becomes responsive to and reacts to the environment around it. Fifth is the physical phenomenon that we find in the body. The brain actually controls much of the physical sensations we have in our bodies. The physical functions the brain controls include the nervous system, circulatory system, respiratory system, digestive system, genitourinary system, and the musculoskeletal system. So you can tell that the brain is pretty much in control of everything your body does. The sixth and last function of the brain is behavior. Everything that we do, all of our behavior, is controlled by the brain. Our behavior is dependent on all the other things the brain does. It is important to understand that most functions of the brain are interrelated. Because of the way the brain is constructed, if something happens in one part of the brain, it often will show up in one or more other parts. For example, if you're feeling sad, it can affect your mood, physical state, and behavior. Your stomach or head can hurt. You can think negative thoughts and avoid being around your friends. How does understanding the brain relate to mental illness? Mental illness happens when something in the brain isn't working properly, or another way of looking at it is when the brain gets sick. A number of different things could be happening inside the brain. First, it may be that a specific part of the brain isn't working well, maybe the parts that affect storing memories. Secondly, a specific part of the brain may be working in the wrong way. For example, maybe the part that's in charge of signaling is overactive so that you get all of these bursts of signaling that shouldn't be there. A third way is that a brain network could be disrupted. There may be problems in the particular connections of brain networks that make it difficult for them to work together properly. A fourth way could be that the neurochemical messengers that help different parts of the brain communicate aren't working properly, so the cells aren't communicating the way that they should. These are some of the ways the brain can get sick, but there are many others as well. In order to learn more about how the brain works, scientists use specialized imaging techniques. One technique is called positron emission tomography, or PET. PET measures the movement of a radioactive chemical injected into the tissues of living subjects, and it gives a view of a single level of the brain. Take a look at these two PET images. Can you see that images 1 and 2 differ in color distribution and pattern? Compared with image 1, some areas of the brain in image 2 increase in activity, and others decrease in activity. Image 1 shows a healthy brain at rest. Image 2 is the brain of someone who has schizophrenia, a mental illness. These PET images of a person who has a mental illness show that the brain is different from that of a person who does not have a mental illness. The level of activity in some parts of the brain of a person who has a mental illness may be lower or higher than in a person who does not have a mental illness. A second set of PET images shows the difference in brain activity between someone who has depression 
and someone who does not. These PET images show different information than those you just saw. Unlike the previous images, which show differences in the activity levels of the brain, these PET images show changes in receptors in the brain. Receptors play a part in delivering electrical signals and chemical messages that the neurons use to produce different actions within the brain and body. Scientists in this study used a radioactively labeled chemical that binds to a group of receptors. In the brains of people without depression, the labeled chemical binds to the receptors, and this shows clearly as bright yellow in the PET images. In the brains of people with depression, the receptors don't bind to the chemical, and the PET images reflect this. These two sets of images show that a mental illness actually changes something about how the brain works. This reinforces the fact that changes in a person's thoughts, emotions, or behaviors correlate with physical changes that happen in the brain. So the next question is, how can the brain become sick? Again, there are many different ways this could happen. One way is that the brain could be damaged by something from outside, like an injury or burst blood vessel, or very, very severe stress. Another way is that the brain could get an infection. For example, meningitis is an infection of the brain. A third way the brain could become sick is based on the genetics of the brain. Each brain has a pre-programmed type of development. It could be that the program is not working properly, and so the brain does not develop properly. Sometimes more than one thing could be happening to cause the brain to become sick. Now that we understand a bit about how the brain works, how it can become sick, and how it operates differently in people with a mental illness, we now want to examine what exactly is a mental illness. Mental illness is a prolonged disturbance of a person's emotions, thinking, and or behavior, which leads to significant problems in everyday life. These problems are severe and cause difficulty for the individual, and they often require professional intervention. When someone has a mental illness, one or more of the brain's six functions will be obviously impaired, and they will have symptoms such as sadness, difficulty thinking, auditory and visual delusions, and many others. As you know, there are many myths about mental illness, including its treatment. So what are the realities of treating a mental illness? First, there are many effective treatments, psychological and medical. Second, most people with a mental illness will get better, and many will recover and stay well if they remain compliant with their treatment program. Third, mental illnesses are not more difficult to treat, nor less effectively treated, than most other chronic illnesses, such as diabetes or heart disease. Fourth, effective treatments are determined by scientific study. And fifth, the earlier the treatment starts, the better. Getting treatment for a mental illness accomplishes several things. The first is balancing a person's biological and psychological systems when they have become a problem. Second, treatment works to stop symptoms from coming back. Finally, treatment promotes sustained recovery so that because of treatment and support, people can get well and stay well.